Now, I want to turn now to what could be one of the worst atrocities in the war on terror yet. Many Americans don't even know about it. Um, it this, this month marks the 10-year anniversary of a massacre that took place in Afghanistan. It happened at Dash Dalele. It's located in the desert of northern Afghanistan near Shabargan. Charges that an Afghan warlord took custody of thousands of Taliban prisoners from U.S. forces and then allowed them to die. Witnesses say the prisoners were crammed into metal containers and transported to Shabargan Prison Fort. But many of them did not make it to their destination alive. Over a three-day period, some witnesses say up to 3,000 suffocated to death or were sprayed by bullets, their bodies thrown into a mass grave at the site. General Abdul Rashid Dostum, the Afghan leader that took charge of this operation, happened to be a U.S. ally. It's unclear what role the U.S. played, but U.S. forces were stationed nearby, and some witnesses say the United States knew all about this. Now, at the time, the Bush administration refused to look into the incident, claiming it was an internal matter for Afghan authorities. But despite a promise by President Obama to investigate, 10 years later, what exactly happened and what role did the U.S. play? That all remains a mystery. To help sort it all out, I spoke to Nathaniel Raymond, former lead investigator on behalf of Physicians United on the Dosh Talele case. I asked him just what did his team discover. Take a listen. Our team at Physicians for Human Rights under the auspices of the United Nations uh, visited the site at least twice uh, to conduct preliminary exhumations in 2002. They found multiple uh, skeletalized remains. That means that the flesh on the bodies had decomposed. And they concluded um, from those remains that the cause of death was consistent with asphyxiation. Um, and so, uh, having found that, um, your team urged both the U.S. and Afghanistan to conduct, um, to further investigate the incident. Um, but what was their response? The response was a, a stone wall of silence, not only from the government of Afghanistan, but also from the United States. And as Jim Risen of the New York Times reported in 2009, there's clear evidence, uh, and that's what our investigation uh, found at PHR as well, that the United States had actively quashed investigations by both the FBI, the State Department, and also uh, the Department of Defense into the Dashti Laley massacre. Can you tell us um, what leads you to believe that there was an effort to cover up the evidence and to, to cover this whole thing up? Uh, what leads us to believe that is three uh, data points. One is the statement of uh, former special agent uh, Del Spry of the Federal Bureau of Investigation uh, to the New York Times that he uh, interviewed detainees at Guantanamo who had allegedly survived a mass suffocation in container trucks in Afghanistan. The second data point is our analysis of uh, declassified U.S. Uh, documents, including intelligence reports through a Freedom of Information Act case we brought against the Bush administration, which showed that the U.S. not only knew about the incident, but they also knew that witnesses in the case had been allegedly murdered. And then the third data point is the documents uh, that we've reviewed and also the conversations I've had with former Bush administration officials, which indicate the clear um, uh, and <laughs> strenuous efforts of uh, senior administration officials in the Bush White House to prevent Department of Defense and Justice investigations into the case. So, um, as you say, there was an attempt to hide this evidence. Um, so, at this point, is there any, uh, is there sufficient evidence to, to prove that this did, in fact, happen? There is, uh, unfortunately, <laughs> um, evidence in the absence of evidence. And what I mean by that is, in working with the American Association for the Advancement of Science, uh, and in particular, Lars Bromley, uh, we at Physicians for Human Rights in 2009 uh, procured satellite imagery of the site, which showed years after the incident had occurred, the presence of backhoes, uh, a pre one backhoe and a uh, what appears to be a dump truck, um, and the presence of two large pits appearing at the site. In uh, our 
view of the matter, uh, a war crime uh, being, the evidence of war crime being destroyed is in itself potentially a war crime. And um, so today, 10 years later, there's still many questions, not very many answers as to what exactly happened there at this site. Um, it, what is your belief of, of the U.S.'s involvement in this massacre? Well, as uh, our investigation found and as we reported um, after the New York Times story came out to the State Department and in meetings with the National Security Council after President Obama said two years ago that he was authorizing a national security team investigation into the matter, um, what we, we know quite plainly that General Abdul Rashid Dostum uh, who controlled that prison, controlled that prisoner transfer in which those men allegedly died, uh, was a CIA asset. We know that he was working at the time with uh, U.S. Uh, special forces and CIA paramilitary forces. And as Newsweek showed and photographs it obtained, U.S. forces were present at the base uh, soon after the events in question in November of 2001. Uh, so the question now that remains is after 10 years of impunity and two years of inaction by the Obama administration, uh, are we going to finally face um, the history in this incident? And in doing so, it's about the present and the future of U.S. policy in Afghanistan, but also U.S. adherence to the Geneva Conventions and the Uniform Code of Military Justice, regardless of whether U.S. personnel witnessed the massacre, U.S. personnel participated in any way, the issue that remains is are we committed to being a nation that is living under the rule of law? And if we are, then we need to investigate this regardless of what the outcome may be or how politically inconvenient. The law is the law. Um, and Nathaniel, if as many people died as estimated, this could be one of the greatest massacres to occur during the war in Afghanistan. Why has there been such little media coverage about this? Well, I would say that uh, the Dashi massacre with the estimated body count uh, that we have been working with of uh, potentially 1,000 to 1,200 people ranks it not only as one of the largest massacres that may have occurred in Afghanistan, but also one of the, the, the largest massacre potentially um, in the 21st century or among the largest. Uh, the issue of media coverage uh, for me is that there's been a, actually a, a sizable degree of media coverage, um, particularly by Roy Gutman uh, of Newsweek and, and now McClatchy newspapers, James Risen of the New York Times. Uh, those reporters have been heroic. Um, where we have not had success is turning that media coverage from numbers of hits into actual policy response. Uh, the question that needs to be raised now by the media is why has President Obama, two years after saying to Anderson Cooper that the U.S. National Security Council would investigate this incident, um, have we heard nothing about it? Was there an investigation? Did it get put in a drawer somewhere at the old executive office building? That's the question that needs to be asked now. And additionally, the, the, those who survived uh, ended up, it appears, at Guantanamo, according to the FBI. Uh, where are they now? Do we still have witnesses uh, to a potential gross violation of human rights in the Geneva Conventions in U.S. custody at Guantanamo or another facility? Um, this is not just about the past. It's about who we are as a nation now and going forward. And lastly, just want to ask you quickly, uh, 10 years later, what hope do you have that a proper investigation will ever be conducted into this case? When I started investigating Dashi Lely, I was 24 years old. And for me, the events of that investigation have shaped every aspect of my life. I try to live my life as a memorial to those witnesses, those 8 to 12 individuals whose names I do not know, who died because they saw something horrific. And as human beings, they told the truth. I do not know if there will ever be a full accounting of the Dash D. Laley incident. I do not know whether the full knowledge of the United States government will ever be revealed. I do know, however, that those men who told the truth and who paid the ultimate price for it deserve us to try as hard as we can. 
And is anybody still alive today that could give a firsthand account of what happened that day? Well, according to the U.S. government, there was a oral debrief at Fort Bragg of the Special Forces, the Green Berets, who were there um, in the area at the time. I think the question we need to ask is, how, as a nation, will we compel those who wore the uniform of our country to uh, account for what they did or did not know about the incident? The issue is not finding people who were there. The issue is compelling them to talk um, in the context of a full, formal investigation. To now, uh, up till now, it's been comments by the president to the media, by spokespeople at State Department and the White House. Um, it has to go beyond <laughs> Um, press statements to an actual thorough inquiry. Okay, great. Um, Nathaniel, thank you so much for, for giving us your insight on all of this. Well, thank you for uh, discussing something that is still so relevant 10 years later.